Welcome to this video. In this video, I want to talk about a very important transaction to select data without ABAP knowledge, and it's the SE16H transaction. Once you enter the transaction code SE16H, then you will end up in here, where you can basically uh, enter your SAP table name, and then, for example, the echo. And then if you want to, you can yeah, limit your search if you just enter selection criteria, and then you execute the search and then basically you will see all the entries based on your limit within the AOV grid control. So therefore within the SE16.8 you can easily get a overview of the data itself stored in the table. And you might know uh, two other transaction codes for the data browser and it's the SE16N and the SE16, so the oldest version of the data browser. And within the SE16H, we are here right now, you have a lot more functionalities. I would like to explain you in more detail within this video, because within here you can use database connections, you can use other joint definitions, which are really, really useful and a lot more. So yeah, enjoy this video and let's get started. First of all, the most important thing in order to use the SE16H is that you have implemented all the needed SAP nodes. So within the SE16H, there you have also a button where you can jump into the needed SAP node. And within here, uh, also all the functionalities of the SE16H are explained yeah, in really, really detail uh, within this uh, SAP node. So this is really useful if you would like to go through all the functionalities, if you would like to read it after this video, so you can also open up this SAP node and go through it. But as mentioned, to use the SE16H, you have to make sure that you have implemented those mentioned SAP nodes within your SAP system. So make sure that they are within your SAP system and then you're good to go to use the SE16H. So now I would like to start with the auto join definition. So this is a great functionality in my opinion and you can use an auto join definition within this drop down and then you can select an auto join definition that you would like to use within the selection. Here right now we can see that I have not created any auto join definition so there's uh, none available and to maintain and to create an auto join definition you have to click on this button maintenance of relationships. So there you click in here and of course, first of all, you have to enter your table. So your primary table um, that you would like to use within this join. So first of all, you have to type this in then you are within here, within here. First of all, you have to type in the name of the auto join definition. And in my case, it's just simply echo underscore echo. That's totally fine. Then if you would like to create it, then you can just simply click on the create button. But within here, we have a lot more functionalities within the F4 hub. You can also yeah, search for different auto join definitions and make any changes. You can just display the auto join definition. You can delete one. You can save your auto join definition. You can copy it and you can transport it also to other SAP systems if you want to. Uh, within here, you can just enter a name, a short description if you like to. And as mentioned, I would like to create it. So I click on the create button. Here you have to specify your secondary table or maybe your secondary tables that you would like to use within the join condition and within here I type in the first secondary table and the only one and it's the egg po. So within here I just would like to join the header and the line item information of a purchase order and the header information are stored within the echo and the purchase order line item information are stored within the ECPO. So that is needed within our joint condition. And it is really important uh, within the 
join itself that you have a cardinality of 1 to 1 or 1 to n. So basically that the in our case if you have one purchase order you can have multiple purchase order line items. So we have a cardinality of 1 to n or if you for example have a 1 to 1 so one header entry and one secondary entry in our case 1 to n if you want to you can also specify or type in a database connection not needed right now and within here you can define the output fields that are displayed within the output in the sc16h and here right now i just would like to output the yeah the able once again the ebelp and yeah maybe let's just display the short text and the material number uh, if you want to you can also do an aggregation not needed right now within here you can check the entries and you can confirm and apply the entries so no they're there the out icon has been changed if you want to you can select this checkbox to make this join as an inner join not needed here right now so that's perfectly fine now what we have to do we have to specify the join condition itself so now we have entered the secondary table but of course we would like to specify the join condition so on what kind of fields and conditions those two tables will be joined and the entries will be displayed and to do this you have to double click on the secondary table and then you can see that this has been taken over and then you can create a join condition so a condition and within here the table field of the echo ECPO is a burn uh, within the method there you have different possibilities you can do a join condition based on a constant so one constant value uh, if the field if the table has this constant value then the entry will be output or used within the join a reference that is what we need so a um, a, a link between two fields so if those values of those two fields are uh, the same then the entry will be selected an output string based on a string value a system um, field so for example if you're using text tables then maybe you would like to set it up to en for english or a complex variable so an exit like a function module to do really complex join conditions as mentioned we would like to use the reference uh, within here um, the reference field um, in the echo is also able has the same name and from the table as mentioned echo here above and then if you want to you can also specify some options but here it's totally fine so here you can check the entries if you would like to add more join tables so more secondary tables then you can just simply um, click on the insert row button to have multiple rows Please make sure that for every secondary table you have to specify a join condition but if you would like to add more join condition then here you can also insert a row as well. So then um, you can you apply your entries uh, because it's not saved it will ask me to save it you can also do exactly the same if you just click on this save button but to show you this I click on the apply entries and now I click on yes to save my changes. So and now if you would like to use it you have to select on the drop down your auto join definition and then click on the execute button of course if you want to uh, within this table you can um, use some selection criteria um, and then you select your uh, or you execute the selection and here to the right we can now see our output fields so our purchase order number the purchase order item number the short text and the material and of course we have multiple times the purchase order number and um, yeah unique purchase order line item number because there are multiple purchase order line items and if i go at three one step back and deselect the outer join definition execute it once again then we can see that now we have just unique purchase order numbers of course because uh, it's the primary key 
Then let's have a closer look to the database connection. Basically, if you leave this input field database connection empty, then the primary database of your SAP ERP system will be selected, will be used. But if you use the for help, basically, then you can explicitly select one database connection, one database. And you have to be quite careful. So if we open up a transaction, it's the DBCO. Then within here, you can basically see those database connections. And here, based on the database system, you can see that those three database connections are HDB, so SAP HANA database. And for example, if you're using not a HANA database, then this can cause long run times. And yeah, you have to be careful to select the right database connection. Also within the transaction code DBA cockpit, you can analyze your system and your database connections within here as well. Then within the table, as mentioned, within here, you have to enter your table. Um, what is kind of like in interesting is that within this button, you can call the extended search. So once you click there, then you will end up in the central access for search functions based on this table. And yep, he, within here, you can call this as well. Then, for example, if you have a table, a table um, linked to a text table, then the t corresponding text table will be listed as here. So for example, if you enter the TS C table then based uh, for the transaction code then also the corresponding text table the TSTCT will be shown within here um, then let's go once again to the echo and here um, basically you can see that uh, the uh, layout test will be will be shown because it's user specific uh, you can call other layouts if you want to. Uh, within here, you can call or enter the maximum number of hits. So the number of entries and rows that are uh, at maximum shown within the output, within the ALV grid control. And a new field is the grouping minimum field. And within here, you can define the minimum number of hits for grouped fields. Um, so for example, if you enter five, uh, only rows into which at least five hits have been grouped are displayed. Kind of like useful. And what I personally also like is the get field input field. So here you have one specific order as the table is defined in the ABAP dictionary, so in the SE11. Um, but for example, if you would like to um, rearrange the order or put one input or one component to the top, then you can uh, call or use the for help or just type in the field name. So for example, the payment terms and within here, then uh, enter, then you can see that the payment terms have been put to the top. Let's do it exactly also for the ANAM. So the created by, and let's do it once again, maybe to this one, the deletion indicator. And now you can see that this has been rearranged. Um, kind of like useful, for example, if you would really quickly uh, enter your selection criteria to limit the search. Um, yeah, so for example, if you just would like to uh, enter your username and you don't want to scroll, uh, of course, you can also uh, use control F and then search for Ernam, and then you are there as well. But yeah, this is also one possibility. Then what is also uh, interesting are the settings. So if you click within here, then you have a bunch of options to change the output settings, to change the initial screen settings and so on. So I think they're yeah, self-explained um, what they are doing. So once you click one and then you continue, then the settings are there and can be used. Uh, once again, you can do exactly the same if you take it out. Uh, that's, that's, I think, 
quite useful and then uh, of course you are uh, able to save a variant um, you can also call number of entries for example based on your selection okay uh, no, uh, no purchase order created by myself is there currently in the system uh, but for example here right now once again number of entries uh, in this system there are uh, almost 1400 purchase orders so um, because right now we have limited the output to 500 and now we can see how many entries are there to get an overview and to be just quicker uh, then the other options, they, I think you should be familiar based on the uh, SE16N and uh, normal ALV grid control functions. And uh, yeah, there are, I think, the most important functions. Um, you have more functionalities compared to the SE16N and the SE16. And if you would like to, yeah, basically want more information about the SE16H put it in the comment section please like the video and please subscribe to this YouTube channel to never miss great upcoming videos thank you so much and see you in the next video